Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, we're gonna continue what we started in our uh, first home automation UII project. So let me take uh, my uh, Raspberry Pi 4 and let's uh, start doing something. So continuing what we started in the previous episode, um, we have now the Raspberry Pi uh, being installed uh, with OpenHAP, uh, you might uh, install uh, the recent OpenHAP. Here I have uh, OpenHAP 2, but uh, probably uh, the recent one is uh, OpenHAP 3 or 3.1. So whenever you install it, you're gonna be able to uh, access it uh, from uh, any browser using the IP, colon, and 8080. So you just need to uh, write the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, you have to know it, and then um, colon 8080. So when you click enter, you're gonna see uh, this uh, view. <clears throat> Probably it's not uh, the same exact view, but uh, something similar. Here I installed uh, several uh, user interfaces. You don't need to have uh, all of them. Probably you just need to have the paper UI uh, the HAP panel, mm, probably you can even install the HAPman, or probably you don't need it because it's for administrators and we are still beginners now. So let's go ahead and press Paper UI. In the paper, paper UI, you have several selections. What we need is to uh, start our first uh, configuration of. Uh, the new Z-Stick because this is the controller that will be used to control the rest of the devices. So we go to uh, Inbox and then add it. But before adding the Z-Stick, we have to uh, insert or let's say to activate the plugin for the Z-Wave into the open hub. So before we start inserting this uh, Z-Stick, uh, we have to uh, go to add-ons add and then bindings and then go all the way to the end to Z-Wave, not Z-Wave, Z-Wave and install it. You just need to click the install. It's going to take uh, probably a couple of minutes or seconds. So. You have installed a plugin of the Z-Wave binding, so this is one of the bindings that you're gonna need to uh, process the whole scenarios and routines into your system. If you need something else, let's say uh, Zigbee or some other uh, protocols, uh, you might be able to do it as well. We have many here, but this is the one that we uh, we have the hardware for. Now. After we installed it, we go to uh, user interface just to take a look. Uh, this is what I told you about. I installed several user interfaces. You just need to have uh, some of them, not all of them. So only the paper UI, you can install this one. And the head panel, you can install this one. The rest are not so important for you as a beginner. Uh, you might see several selections here, but they are not so important for you at the moment. Okay, so after we installed the Z-Wave protocol, we can now go and add it as a thing. So we go to Inbox, press plus. You will not find all of these things because I installed them for my own 
testing, but you just need to install this one, Z-Wave Binding. You click this one, it might take some time, depending on your uh, network. And then you add manually the Z-Stick. So you add manually your Z-Stick, Z-Wave Serial Controller, you click here. And then you're supposed to uh, find the Z-Stick that you have inserted into Raspberry Pi, okay? I'm gonna show you how it's gonna look like once we install it. So you don't need to uh, bother yourself into all of these configurations. You just need to check something important that I'm gonna show you here. So in the things, I have three different devices installed. So this is the serial controller the Z-Stick serial controller that I have from IOTech and it's showing online which means that it's working if it is not online it means that it doesn't work I show you some more information you see any of these channels are not activated because you don't need them actually they are just for statistics and for some uh, further details but we just need to have the Z-Stick installed to work as a gateway for our Z-Wave network. And now we go into uh, the details of the Z-Wave controller, how it's connected. The only important thing here, the name, you might name it as, as you want, but it's not so important. The only important item is here. You have to see this ACM0. If it is AMA0, it doesn't work. So make sure it's ACM0. And why I'm showing you this? Because um, Z-Stick from IOTIC, uh, the old version, uh, the, let's say Z-Stick version, uh, version 5, uh, it was not working uh, or not compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4 so you have to do something to make it compatible or you have to buy the new one which is compatible by default ok click ok and then we are ready and good to go with installing or adding the new uh, devices what we need in our uh, uh, test here is to add a sensor and what I have is a multi-sensor which is from IOTIC multi-sensor 6 I just need the motion sensor and uh, we need to uh, have a switch so we can reflect the movement that can be detected by the motion sensor to the switch so here we have, uh, we can see this is the multi sensor from IOTIC. I just use uh, the regular connection uh, through uh, a power supply, but uh, you might uh, be able to put uh, batteries as well, and it's gonna take, uh, it's gonna last probably six months or one year, depending on uh, your usage. And here I have. Uh, the switch from IOTIC as well. I have already uh, configured the network so that the motion sensor is gonna uh, reflect a switching towards the uh, switch and that's why when I move my hand it has been activated because I already did uh, the configuration for the rule and there is another rule that whenever the timeout of the sensor uh, have reached uh, the switch is gonna be uh, switched off and this is what you see so switch on it takes a couple of seconds depending on the configuration that I did and then it's gonna uh, switch it off again uh, inserting a new device is not uh, difficult. I'm gonna show you something. Uh, 
uh, similar. So let's say I have another IOTIC switch. I just need to insert it. If it is a new device, it is ready to be uh, uh, assigned to the network by regular inclusion. And if it is not, you can just reset the device. There's a button here. You press it like this continuously and check for the color. Gonna take probably uh, 20 seconds to have the complete reset. Look, it's a blinking. And then whenever it reaches a uh, green color, it means that it's ready. And okay, now it's ready. So what we need just to try inserting this, we go to uh, inbox and we go and we uh, press plus. It is at Z-Wave device, Z-Wave. Now it's searching. So what I need to do is to press this. It's a blinking now. And at the same time, it has been detected by OpenHAM. We just, we just wait for uh, a couple of seconds. So we it has all the configuration being installed because without the name, it means that it's not fully uh, extracting the data. And now it's ready. And we uh, press the check sign. The name is automatically uh, appearing. You can just uh, remove the name or name it in the way you want and then add thing okay and that's it I think so when we go to configurations things added and the configurations things it has been added so which one of them switch six and the switch six for sure, it's a most recent one, which is 40, okay? For now, we don't need it. So we just remove it. Or we can even hide it if you want. So we remove it, delete, remove. And we might remove it from the network here as well for future use. Now. The same you can do for the multi-sensor and the same for the smart switch 6. Okay. Now we have these devices installed. Are we sure that they are connected all together? Yes. I can show you something. It's not necessarily that you do it from uh, the admin uh, user interface, but I'm going to show you just for uh, information. This is how they look like. So number one is the controller 37, which is smart switch six, 38, it's the multi-sensor six. They are both connected to the controller and they are connected to themselves as well. So this is the benefit of the Z-Wave network. It works as a repeater for itself. So this works as a repeater for this and vice versa. And whenever you have multiple devices, you can build a big network and each node is gonna be working as a repeater for the rest of the nodes. So we can go into uh, long distances without the need to be close to the controller. Um, just for information, this can be uh, seen from uh, the Hubman and then you just go to uh, tools. It's gonna take a couple of seconds depending on uh, your network. So we go to tools, Z-Wave viewer, and you're gonna find this view. And now returning back to uh, the paper UI, in the paper UI, we have created these uh, devices. But 
for each one, let's say for the multi-sensor, there is something important that you have to configure before you go uh, into the programming of the rules. Uh, you see here, we have multiple channels. So for each thing, there are channels. And inside the channel, there are items. The item is, uh, let's say, it's the variable that we're going to use to control the device or to take the status of the device. So just think about it it's like that. In the programming languages, when you assume that there is a variable, x, for example, x can be an input or output. For the sensor here, it is an output showing the status, which is the motion. And you can add several channels depending on the configuration of the device. And inside each channel, you can configure multiple items and name them differently. Like you, you use different variables and the programming languages. And uh, here in the motion alarm, we have this item, which is just showing that uh, whenever we have uh, an emotion, we have to take the status of this motion from this item. And here we can see that it has a label, category, type, and you might find, find some other parameters. Uh, the label here is a motion alarm. It's just a label, you put it. Category, you have to select its motion and this icon is going to appear automatically. And the type is a switch. We have several types, but selecting a type of a switch means that it's a triggering uh, one of two uh, modes, either on or off. So no movement, it means off. There is a movement, it means on, which is much easier. OK, we go back to things. We just check the smart switch and the smart switch is also consisting of multiple channels you don't need to activate all of them we just need to activate the switch for example uh, the other uh, channels are related to uh, uh, measurements how much current what is the voltage what's the color of the device itself because you are able to uh, change it and the switch, you will find that I created this item and the item is similar to uh, the item that uh, we have in the uh, multi-sensor with, uh, with a small difference. So the label is a switch, it's not no more a sensor. Category is a switch. With, whenever you write a switch, it's going to show you this icon. And the type is a switch as well because it's a switching between two different uh, uh, levels, let's say uh, 0 and 1, or on and off. Something I might uh, forget to tell you about regarding the multi-sensor switch. If you go here, you're going to find further advanced details on how to configure the sensor. And what I like to do is to uh, reduce the motion sensor reset timeout. I put it 10 here which means that it's going to wait 10 seconds till it resets itself. So whenever we have a, a motion, it's going to stay for 10 seconds, and then it's going to reset itself, which can be reflected into switching off the switch. OK, so we have everything configured here. By the way, these are the items that we created. We created a motion alarm item and a switch item. And uh, we just need to go to rules. We cannot find the rules unless we install it. So there should be something that we install. So we go to add-ons. Then
miscellaneous and then rule engine uh, don't worry about experimental because it's gonna work uh, for information this will be needed if you need to access your system from another network so within the network itself you don't need to have this one if you need to access it from the cloud you have to install this but this is not under the scope of this episode so you install the rule engine and whenever you install it you will be able to access it from here and here I can show you that I built two rules motion on switching on motion off switching off and the motion on there is it's like um, in the programming language you have if then and else so this is the condition and this is the action the condition is if there is any motion which is which means that the status of the uh, sensor is on regardless of the previous state do this action put this command on where in the switch so we select the switch and that's it we click this back to the other rule we see the same when then and probably if there is another condition which we don't have right now if there is any change you might put an action send a command and that's it so why do we need uh, to have the hub panel this one because it's very important to uh, easily access the new devices so we go to hub panel and it's gonna show you a different view uh, containing the switch and the sensor so you have to create a new panel or dashboard this can be done here add a new dashboard okay so I have already added a new dashboard and named it motion to switch and whenever you create this new dashboard you go inside it and you can do all the configuration so let's say if this is empty because it's a new you're gonna be able to uh, click this which is the edit and you just add add widget so for me I added a button for the switch and a switch for the sensor because from experience I know that they are the best in terms of reflecting what I want to do so when I run it it's gonna show me that the switch is off and the motion sensor is off I will be able to switch on and off the switch from here as well but it is not necessary because I already uh, connected uh, the motion sensor with the switch so whenever there is a motion this sensor is it triggering the switch and it will take a couple of seconds depending on the configuration that I did and then it's gonna activate the other rule to switch it off so we wait for a couple of seconds now it's off and that's it you have created a z-wave network 
which consists of a motion sensor, a switch, and everything is going through the Z-Wave controller. You are good to go into inserting some more devices or probably making an advanced uh, configuration on uh, the devices that you already have. But this is one of the important things that you have the devices, you are capable of doing the rules between both of them. For sure there are much many uh, uh, applications that can be installed or configured on OpenHub. Uh, we might talk about them in future or advanced uh, episodes. So for now, thank you so much and uh, see you later.